So we are going to do a couple of things um, uh, quickly. We are a betting podcast and Nate, you're in Las Vegas. And yeah. so we have to talk about this. I've been very excited. Um, give us some of the things that um, you have bet on futures, even if it's something that you haven't bet on yet, but you're like, hey, this kind of a thesis I have, uh, I want to hear it. Okay, so one, uh, I'll go knock out a couple that I have bet on already. Uh, one is Patriots to win the AFC East at Ooh. plus plus three fifty. I think uh, I think the defense is going to kick back. I think last year was just I honestly I think Belichick just kind of redshirted last year mm -hmm. uh, with everybody. Um, the O line is legitimately very good. Uh, they in the sense they have no real weaknesses. They might not have a lot of stars, but it's more every player's good, which mm -hmm. is. No, you don't really get that much in these days. I think Cam, like I said, is a little better than people gave him credit for. I'm a big fan of Kedrick Bourne, the receiver they, they signed. Mm -hmm. Nelson Aguilar, I know that it's kind of a weird signings, like, you know, in the sense how they pay and everything, but I do like the synergy that they're going to bring. I'm going to use a nice little corporate buzzword there. Yeah, um, and then also, yeah, I like that. <laughs> um, and also, uh, you know, the tight ends, you know, with the John New Smith and, and Hunter Henry. And I just... I can kind of picture what they're trying to do now. And I, I, I like it. And also just getting value here, plus 350. They can get the Patriots at that. I think the Bills might get a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of regression. I think they got a little lucky sometimes with some of the offensive stuff they did last year. I think the Dolphins, I don't think Tua, we didn't even mention Tua yet yeah. in this podcast, which is saying something. So, you yeah. know, we did that whole tiers. We knocked out 15 to 20 quarterbacks and none of us mentioned to us. So that kind of tells you my feelings on the Dolphins as well. Um, so I just think I like the value of Patriots uh, at plus 350. Um, I also have the Rams AFC or MC West at plus 190. Um, uh, that is just, it's a pick them really. I think the MC West is going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun to watch. That was just more, Hey, this is, you know, it's better than even money. I put a little mm -hmm. taste on that. I have Quiddy Pay, a defensive rookie of the year at 10 to 1. Um, I think he got kind of stuck in Michigan in a, a you know, read and react scheme where he's going to benefit from just going, just pinning mm -hmm. his ears, ears back and going. And I think he maybe surprised some people with some sacks. That's more, you know, a little value pick there as well. I, I think he was maybe about the fourth or fifth favorite. Um, what else do I have? I have Calvin Ridley, the lead in, re lead in receiving yards at plus 1,000. Uh, I think Calvin is an elite receiver. Uh, studying him back and going through going through some of these guys I watched this offseason, he, he's incredible. He's a really, really good player. Um, I think just the situation they have in Atlanta where they might be a little leaky on defense, weird. Mm -hmm. How many years have we said that now? Yeah. Um, so I think in being in that Arthur Smith offense, there's going to be a lot of explosive play gener generated. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a nice fit there where you can you know maybe get one there. Um well, we got, we can keep going here. We got, well, I was gonna, uh, I, while, while you're yeah. picking out the next ones, I was going to say, you know, the, the Tua thing is so interesting because you mentioned Cam in that tier, not talking about Tua and going, yeah, like the quarterback matters like a hell of a lot, you yeah. know? And if, like, if there is a little bit of regression from the Bills standpoint, maybe we've been thinking about the Dolphins, Brian Flores, and all they look, they put together a receiving. And I love that, Flores. I, I, I think Flores is a great coach, by the way, sorry, to but he can't drop there. back and play quarterback, Correct. you know? And like, so like ultimately, you know, I, I do think that's really fascinating. And then I'm sure Eric will mention, was going to mention this, but like the Calvin Ridley one, like, you know, he's still, is he still first in receiving yards in our projections, Eric? Like that just feels that's like good about incredible value. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. I was pretty, I know. I was pretty excited to see that 10 to one, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I was, yeah, so that, that one I had a little taste on. Um, yeah, no, I, I, especially with, with Tua, I, I originally he had his breakout game against Arizona, and I was like, okay, you're a little. I was a little lower on him coming out, and mm -hmm. I was before I kind of had any platform. It was just me tweeting to two thousand people, so it was, <laughs> you know, no one even. It was not too much when I was talking about it, but it's kind of like I feel like his upside's Alex Smith, and it's like that's mm -hmm. that's it. He's a lefty Alex Smith, and I I have to see more because I uh, we're talking about the can't and won't thing. Mm -hmm. He was such a fast processor, and I was just always like is that good or bad? Is that a, a, is that a, you know, is that a good part of the system or is that a bug, you know, mm -hmm. is that a feature mm -hmm. or a bug? And so I want to, I have to see him this next year before I really, I mean, all, all of us do, but it's like, man, you know, it's got a little worrisome, like how quick he was to that. And the fact that they just went, Nope, we're putting Fitzpatrick in. Like the fact they did that was like, it's a little scary. <laughs> you know, it's a little, mm -hmm. little, 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 little worrisome. You guys just read in between the lines. Um, I also have uh Dak to lead in passing yards at plus 500. Um, just same thing. Uh, talking about Calvin mm -hmm. a little bit. I, 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 he was on pace to 
I mean, I know that's just what the situation. Yeah. yeah, the game scripts they were in last year, but um, I think same kind of things. I think the defense will be a little leaky. I think that offense could be so explosive. Um, so that was another one. Um, I also have Dak MVP at plus 1700. Uh, just narrative thing. Uh, I, MVP votes, I think you just have to take a shot and just hope it's some mm-hmm. narrative guy. Um, that's why I have Stafford at plus 1600 as well. Same thing. Not that I think they're going to be that true MVP quarterback. Maybe Dak is a little bit because Mahomes is always should be getting it every year. Um, but it's like, I, I think just narrative wise, I could see that kind of building a little bit. Cowboys have a big year. You have the Cowboys, mm-hmm. you get the Dallas pump a little bit. Stafford, we've talked about, I mean, you guys were already have mentioned it the narrative that's already swelled this off season. Now imagine a full season. If the Rams storm, storm the NFL a little bit, you just never know with those guys. Um, then rookie of the year, I have Trey Lance offensive rookie year plus 600. Ooh. I think a quarterback in a Shanahan offense, you're going to always just have to maybe take a peek at. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also just, again, trying to give value a little bit. Uh, I still does that more. one, does that one feel <laughs> um, so by the way, I was going to say like, it's funny the narratives with Dak and Stafford. I, so one of my favorite bets is is Brady plus sixteen uh, hundred to win MVP. That's great. And too. like, I just he was so good to win, yeah. since the buy, you know, like, and all yeah. those guys are coming back, and and no one's really talking about him in that respect. But when you're getting all this hype pre season, like it's easy to fall short of those, mm-hmm. as opposed to like over, you know, just like over the top deliver, you know. And that, and I worry about that with the Rams, like everyone thinks they're going to be a Super Bowl contender. It's like, well, okay, but like one injury happens. They're such a thin team. You know what happened yeah. there. And with the Cowboys, what's so fascinating to me is the way the media treats them. Like, I think that you, like Dak has a great head on his shoulders, but get up leads with what, what he ate for breakfast every morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like insane. And like, that just yeah. makes it harder um, for, for him. I, I was going to ask you about the Trey Lance thing with Shanahan. When I was listening to your podcast uh, about um, defensive schemes and talking about like, okay, everyone's trying to stop the Shanahan offense. And I, to me, the Trey Lance pick solidified the fact that Shanahan is like, I got to do something more. Yep. You know, I, I can't just keep like running this same thing back. Even if I have really creative motions and this run scheme and like all the stuff, it's like, I got to have another X factor that I can bring into it. Um, and I'm curious what you think that looks like. Absolutely. He, he, I think the last couple of years, he was like, all right, I have this quarterback that, yeah, he's efficient. He's accurate. He's doing what kind of what I want him to do. He doesn't push the ball down the field and he doesn't create. So what did he do? He went and got a quarterback that could push it down the field <laughs> and could create mm-hmm. and it could stand strong in the pocket. That's, it's been a knock on Jimmy G since he came out of college. Like even when he was at Eastern Illinois is that he doesn't have presence in the pocket. Like he is, mm-hmm. he, his eyes come down. And it's, I, I don't ever want to call a guy soft because it's not, he's not soft. It's just that some guys do, some guys go to one read and they go, they feel the pressure, they curl up and they take the hit. Guys are just, some guys are just like that. Some guys are willing to stand there, boom, take it full blast. I'm not recommending that for anybody, but <laughs> I think that's what Kyle was just kind of like, Hey, I, I, I like what this guy can do. Um, I, Trey Lance was one of the most fun watches, surprisingly fun watches in the sense that I thought you'd just be a big athlete. I actually compared him to Donovan McNabb, um, not just because he wore number five and wore green and yellow uh, or wore green, yeah. but it's his over the top delivery, how big he is, but I didn't realize how cerebral he he was going to be. And that was something that shocked me when I watched him. I saw him point out protections and point and point out blitzes and change sliding stuff. And then it came out where coaches confirmed that and said, yeah, that's mm-hmm. what we do with him. Mm-hmm. And I think Kyle met the kid and was just like, oh, yeah, I like that. Like I, this guy knows football and going with, and we talked to touch on before the kind of wishbone offense that Shane hands kind of leaned into this last year and a half. Um, I think he's going for more guys that can just do a little bit of everything. The Debo Samuels, the Iukes, the juice checks, even, even, you know, Kittle a little bit in the sense where I can line up. I have my five skill guys on every snap. I can line them up everywhere, but now I have that plus a quarterback that can run. So every snap of the ball, the defense has to go, well, we have to guard all six guys. Like it's like a true, mm-hmm. almost like motion offense in basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's really what he, I think he just like, was like, he tweaked it a little bit last year. He was like, this kind of, I, I don't think he would openly said this, but he's like, this is kind of a wasted year. And I think he, all of a sudden he just went, okay, now I'm leaning all the way into it. And I think once he gets a Lance in there and they're running almost these triple option, kind of things or not true triple option, but more jet sweep with zone coming back and counter mm-hmm. coming back. I think it's gonna be really cool stuff to watch. No, I'm, I look, I'm excited. I, I am curious. What, if you had to pick a week where Trey Lance finally starts, what would it be? 
I think week one. I think he I think he goes right into it. I, I think by the end of camp, I, I think that's what happens. I, I think it's like week one of camp, no. And then they get into the week three preseason game and they announce it. Like I I I can I could see that picture that happening. There, that's one of the reasons why I like Trey Sermon for the same yeah. award because I think if Lance only starts like 10, 11 games, he could very well win it. But I think Sermon has the potential to succeed in that offense in much the same way that you're talking about. And and yeah, that, 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 I think that's a good shot. If he plays all 17 games, I mean, of the quarterbacks, he's the front runner. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Yeah, I no, I agree. That's the thing is I I just don't think the Jags would be good enough. Lawrence might have a kind of one of those 24 touchdown, 12 interception year, 14 interception year, kind of like a skewy stat line year where he's kind of gauging the NFL um, and I could just see Trey Lance being on a winning team and getting that yep. kind of that, that easiest schedule goal. in the NFL, the Niners, yeah. one yeah. of the easiest schedules in the NFL. So. And you can just see it happening and people, there's going to be eyes on them. I mean, it's the 49ers. Like, so it's just, you got putting those puzzle pieces together. Yeah. They have five, they have the maximum number of primetime games, which is shocking. They also brought back the 94 Super Bowl Reds. Jersey. Yeah. You, you can't, Hey, Look, that's can we not get me too excited for the year. Like it's just going to, somehow it's going to crash and burn. And I just, <laughs> would like to live in in bliss for another you know well, few months or so you're gonna love um, my, ne- my next bet then it's nick bosa defense player of the year 11 i like that i i think he talk about narrative i think people have forgotten about nick bosa for whatever reason mm-hmm. um he's still a freak and uh he's gonna he it was an early injury which always helps so i think he can play the whole 17 games and and come back rip roaring and like you said five national tv games like that 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 stuff does matter yeah. It just, it, it's, it does like, cause people just tout that. I mean, we, I'm talking about the chiefs Rams game from two years ago because it's Nike. I mean, yeah, it mattered Cause those are two mm-hmm. awesome offenses and stuff, but it's like, those matter when you watch those. Nike if he gets like a three sack game and a primetime game, like, yeah. or especially one of the early ones, he's like the favorite right away. Like, yep. You know. He just needs one more in week, like 15. And then yeah, it's like, okay, no that's one, it. no one knows what's happening on the defensive side of the ball, like elsewhere in the league too. It's, it's hilarious. Like Aaron Donald was literally eating people for lunch for like four (laughs) years and no one knew who he was. I remember like one year I was like, is the best defensive player, a guy on a four and 12 team who plays defensive tackles. Like, yeah, he was (laughs) play football before. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know that's, isn't it funny how that works though? It's like certain positions. It's like, no, this guy's really good. And they're like, I don't know. I don't know. And that's actually, (laughs) if you want to like take a real shot in the dark or take a home run swing at defense player of the year, I would say Brian Burns, um, who was like, I heard that. I love that. Like, I think he was like, I think with the one I saw, he was 42 or 45 to one somewhere around there, Mm -hmm. but that's about the, you're the the second person to come on the podcast and say that. Yeah. That's very good. Another guy though. That's like, even I was a fan and like hit rewatching them. I'm like, this guy's incredible. And I think it's just, it's, it's a year. There's that year delay. It's like mm-hmm. people in the know, know it. Then other people know it. And then the national, everybody else knows it about a year after everybody else. Like that's kind of the catch up. So it might be yep. next year. Brian Burns might be the bad, but I think this year you might have that kind of upper tier play. And then I have two uh, win total bets. I have jets over six and a half wins. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 like what they're doing on offense. I think, Joe, I think Joe Douglas has done some nice things. I really mm-hmm. do. I'm a bigger fan of Salah um, after this past season than the Super Bowl season. Mm-hmm. I mentioned this on the podcast. I thought the Super Bowl year, I was like, oh, that's easy. Just get an awesome D line and, you know, yeah. wreck shit. Like, that's easy. Just run single high behind it. This past year, when he had some injuries, he tweaked how the defense played. And I was like, okay, this guy can coach. And I know the energy. I know that all the players love him, but that only goes so far. But the fact that he can back it up with some scheme stuff, I was like, I like you a little more than I did. Um, and I just, I like what they're doing, some of the offensive pieces. And, and I just, I just like it. Yeah, I really do. And then the other one is under six and a half wins for the Eagles at uh, plus 120. And I'm, uh, I, yeah, I think Eagles are a little, uh, little rough on the roster. The Eagles um, might have the number one overall pick this year. Let's just say it. Let's just let's I, just be. Uh, let's just say. So it. we we did our, our show. We did another one of like our draft shows, I guess, and it was like kind of like uh, who has the worst roster. And Texans were kind of like, yeah, the easy one. Yeah. But then it was like non Texans category, and Eagles was like my easy. I, I just everyone over all their best players are over thirty and like broken down, mm-hmm. or and all the and they missed out about what four or five draft classes of like any players like yeah. that mm-hmm. that that matters. Um, I mean, it does. I as I'm a huge fan of Devontae Smith. I really am. I, I think he's I, I he was my number one receiver coming to this draft. But it's like that's a receiver. It's not not a quarterback. You know that yeah. you're really excited about the rookie uh, 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 being a rookie. 